Hey everyone, welcome back to another easy programming tutorial with C++. This is my tutorial number 25 and today I want to show you something not so very new but it's a good way to practice. Uh, what you see in front of you is the index sort tutorial that I showed you last time. It has the index sort, you put in the name, the grade, you have seven of each and it sorts through index by just changing around the index and it's sourced that way and um, if you don't know how this works uh, I recommend you visit my other video the older video the one I did almost two weeks ago and have a look at that today what I, what I want to show you is just putting up the index sort into functions I've had uh, someone uh, prior to message me and tell me that um, he wants me to show him how to do this uh, using functions uh, even the college I go to, uh, some of the professors there, they teach index sort by splitting it up into different functions so that the main program, which is int main here, has a very small, of uh, just a few lines of coding, and everywhere else goes the rest of the codes. And this is going to be the first part of something else that I want to show you, which is uh, including header files and then including implementation files that will come in uh, future videos. So to first do this, uh, the first thing we want to do is go up here and declare a few functions. Uh, for this, we're only going to be using void functions. Uh, if you want to know how void functions fully work, including reference parameters and everything, I recommend you visit. I have a tutorial for that as well. I have one for value returning functions as well, but we won't be doing anything with value returning since we're not going to be outputting in, in the main. So let's declare a few variables, uh, a few functions. We'll do void. Uh, we'll do init for initializing, which will contain this for loop. It's just a few lines. Uh, it'll initialize index i, index, um, you know, from index 0 to index 6 to the value of i. So we'll do int index 7. Sorry. There. You don't have to put the 7 in there. You can keep it blank. Leave it like that. It'll work the same way. But you know, I'm just putting the 7 in there just to show you that there are 7 index values. Next thing I want to do is include another function and we're going to use this function to sort, so we're just going to put whatever is in here. You, know, you have uh, temp equals to index i, index i equals to index j, index j equals to temp. We're just sorting based on name, the value of name, and you know, if it's lower, if it's higher, etc. Uh, so here we're going to call it sort, and we're going to have to send back uh, two variables. Um, first thing we'll send back is string name 7. Again, you can keep the you don't have to put the 7 in there, you keep it blank. And it will send an index, send index 7. If you were sorting by grade, like I showed you last time, or told you last time, um, you can, you're going to have to change this to, na to grade, change this to grade, and instead of sending grade down, you have to, uh, excuse me, instead of sending name down, you'd have to send in grade. We will be sending all the values back, uh, so the, so, you know, before I showed you how to use the ampersand, which is a reference parameter where you're sending back values through the parameter list. But we won't have to do that here because arrays are automatically referenced. So it doesn't matter how many you have, you know, it's it's always referenced. You don't have to put the ampersand sign there. But if you were to include, let's say, the value of i, you want to return it, then you have to do ampersand i to return it back to the parameter. Otherwise, it won't be returned at all. And then I want to include one more function. We'll do void output. We'll just output everything. Um, that part of the code will contain this portion. Uh, you know, you have the blank line, and then it will output name, index i, grade, index i. No. And let's see. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have to send back a few. Uh, we're going to do string name 7. Because we're outputting grade, we're going to have to send in grade as well, grade 7, and int index 7. And I forgot the int here and there. You, know, you have your three functions right there. Uh, if you don't, if you remember how to use the void functions, just you can just type it in or just copy it in. I like 
copying is easier up to the semicolon because you don't need the semicolon you can go down here right below where main stops paste it you know open and close brackets just in case you forget and I'm gonna go up here uh, this is the initializing where um, I goes from 0 to 6 and index I is equal to whatever I is you know, it initializes it telling it what the value of I should be what the value of index I should be so I'm just gonna cut and paste there uh, we're not done yet since we're not sending down the value of I we're gonna get an error if we don't declare it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to declare it here and it's going to be a local variable for the for func for the for loop uh, you can do it up here too I mean int i it doesn't matter but I'm just doing it the doing it inside here since we're only having that one for loop and once this is done it'll send back all the values of i through the parameter list you know by reference automatic as the specialty of arrays and then we're going to come back here and uh, we have to call the function this is the main you need to call the function tell the program to call that function so we're going to call we're not going to use void we're going to use the name so it will be init and you see little thing comes up here it says um, void init uh, and index I'm just going to put index in there you don't have to declare any variable type or function type you just do this so I'm gonna so you know at this po part of the program the program is calling the function which is in it the name is in it and it's going to go down here so just to see that it's working I'm going to run the program and make sure the console command screen pops up in here it does so it's working so next thing you want to do is take out the sort so you know you can copy and paste you can type it in again it doesn't matter scroll back down go below this and then remember to open and I'm going to go down here, go up here, and then right after the init index, up to here. Remember to get all the brackets. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to cut and paste. There. That's all I'm doing. Notice all the brackets here, and it's the same thing from last week. Again, if you want to know what, how the index set works, uh, look at my video from last time and here we're gonna go back down here we have to tell the program to call the sort function so we're gonna do sort the name of the function you don't have to do the type and then you see the little pop-up thingy it says string name so we're gonna include name and index you don't have to include any brackets or parentheses for the arrays you know they're automatically known to the program and just to make sure it works we're gonna run it again and let's see if it pops up. There's an error. I think I made a spelling mistake somewhere. Oh yes, the J and I. I'm gonna copy this. Like I said, if you don't declare I and J in the in the for loops or inside the function as local variables, you'll get an error. And that's basically what I just got. So I'm gonna do this. Since I move J here it's not needed in the main program so you can go up here you can just take out J because it's unused now let's run it now and there it runs easy and we have one more function left which is the output It's going to output onto the screen whatever the answer is so we'll do this remember to close and we have I'm going to take all this. I'm going to cut and paste. Remember, cut is Control X, paste is Control V. And there, I'm just going to point it out again. You have I and you know you have I as a local variable. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to declare I, just so I don't get that error again. And you know it should work perfectly, except you have to call the function here since we're calling it output output put parentheses the thing comes up again you do name grade index again in void functions the name the names of the fun uh, the the variables inside the function parameter list doesn't matter you can name them anything you can name it n7 g7 i7 just make sure that when you're passing it down 
in the argument in the main program that you name it whatever you declare it as up here and you see how small the main program has gotten it's gotten from here to just here there it used to be a long program now the implementation of it is bigger and you know this you have the three functions here but we'll run it and make sure that it works there we'll enter a few names we'll do zebra hundred monkey ninety elephant ninety five we'll do parrot uh... hundred um... what other animals are there? cat ninety five dog ninety five Oh, I put dog any okay uh, okay let's do um pigeon we'll do eighty and there you have it cat dog elephant monkey parrot pigeon zebra in alphabetical order with their corresponding grades easy and if you want to know how to make the main even smaller by putting the prompt into a function as well I'll show that to you right now it's pretty easy this is good practice it's good to just have a program with just main program with just functions and just have an implementation file somewhere else with the actual calculations and sorting and whatever else. We'll call it prompt. We'll do we'll have to send down string name and int grade. Excuse me, grade seven. You should copy that down. I'm going to put it above the init functions so that it's all in order. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to copy this, cut, and inside the prompt, paste. Again, you have the I here that you're going to have to declare. I'll declare it in here to make it easy. And then up here, I'm going to have to call the function, which is prompt name and grade. That's all you have to send. You have to send index because we're not calling for the index. And since you're no longer using I in the main, you don't need this anymore. And see how small the program has gotten, the main program. You can have, and you know, if you run it now, it'll run again just fine. But let's look at it. There you go. Uh, again, zebra, 100, parrot, 90, Elephant, 90, 80, dog, 85, cat, 100, uh, do, tiger, 90, panda, 50. Let's do there, cat, dog, elephant, panda, parrot. Again, it's all in order. It's pretty neat. This is your main program. And hopefully in the future tutorial, I'll show you how to include all of this into a header file and then later all of the functions into an implementation file which is another CPP file the header files are .h files and then in the main file the main CPP file you just have int main you know just that bit along with um, include iostream include you know, header .h or whatever you'll name it you know it's pretty easy this is simple this is good practice if you haven't worked with void functions if you're new with functions this is a really good way to do this uh, if you have old program, just break it down into functions, uh, both value returning and void functions. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed this program, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe.